They say that, crucially, they think one of the key things here is the role of Reform UK, led by Richard Tice, of course, Nigel Farage, still very much involved, president of the party, um, that will take Tory votes, basically. Whoever, you know, if they stand a candidate, and they've said they'll stand a candidate in every seat, that will take Tory votes. And if they didn't stand, they reckon Labour Party would be down to 311 seats. Tories up to 265, so gaining almost 100 seats. Lib Dems down to 26. The Reform UK, oh, the difference between well, a total electoral annihilation and a hung parliament. Do you think Richard Tice would be enticed into standing candidates down? Well, I think he certainly should be, because his argument, be. and, I've, and I've, heard, I've heard his argument um, a few times now, where he will essentially say to the public that, you know, Tories and the Labour Party are both, you know, two sides of the same coin. He'll call them both socialist governments, and it's only reform that can deliver the change that's needed. It is a, an argument. It's not one that um, uh, I believe in, because as those figures that you just read out show, if uh, there are candidates uh, for the Reform Party that stand in every seat, it impacts more on the Conservative Party yeah. than it does Labour. So a vote for Richard Tice's uh, and Nigel Farage's reform party is effectively allowing Labour in uh, through the back But a door. lot of people are saying, and the reason we're asking this question today is that they say, well, you, yes, and, you know, and, and Richard Tice has addressed this. Unfortunately, he's now within another channel. We're not able to get him on the show anymore, uh, which is very frustrating. He's a very good friend of mine. And um, his argument, publicly and privately, is mm. the Tories, yes, yes, this may lead to the Tories being wiped out, but they don't deserve to win again. And we, we, on the people on the right in this country cannot continue to say, well, we won't stand against the Tories, we'll stand down. Again, there's a lot of regret, I think, for Nigel Farage as well, from standing back half, half of their candidates, some 300 at the 2019 election to enable Boris to get in and get Brexit done. Although, you know, we did actually get that. I think we were in an ex existential battle for our constitutional democracy at mm. that point. Um, I think he did the right thing, frankly. Um, and there was a lot of hope then. But, um, and again, we are, we're up against Jeremy Corbyn um, as, uh, as Labour leader. I think that was a very different uh, state of affairs. Although I think Keir Starmer was pretty much as bad. But the, his argument is, you know, but the Tories don't deserve another term in office. They haven't delivered. They, they've made promises. They failed and failed and failed again. And if you just say, well, we'll vote for them again, you're basically, you're basically giving them a free pass to underperform. There's, there's talk about a whole realignment of right, you know, the conservative right politics if the Tories are annihilated. Likely? Desirable? No, I don't think... I mean, I think, look, you know, the Conservative Party has always been a broad church. You will always have people who are um, slightly more centre-right uh, and people that are uh, a bit closer to the, to the yeah, right when it comes to... All major political parties are very um, broad, aren't it, they? It, it, exactly. And so, you know, but the, the, that ideology of the Conservative Party to a side, it is not about now just, you know, telling the public what should happen and telling the public what you want to do. It's about showing to the public what you can do. And so what you, tax cuts... Shouldn't it be what you've done? After and, 15 years in power, it should be what you've done. And, and, and I think, you know, what I hope would be the Conservative okay. Party's strategy um, message would be that, you know, what has Rishi Sunak done? Because his name is effectively, even though we vote for our you know, local MPs, he will be uh, either the Prime Minister or, or Sir Keir Starmer. So what is Rishi's record? And he will say that he's taken some tough decisions when he was Chancellor. Obviously, COVID, um, he was uh, uh, doing a lot to you know, protect people's uh, lives and livelihoods. It was I about can remember being the tearful at the end of one of his press conferences, actually, that if we were going to have people off work, at least giving people the help. But again... But again but everyone, yeah, that's great. That one, not everyone, but an awful lot of us went, yeah, that's great. Like, how did people think it was going to be paid for? Well, he's taken that, you know, he's had to borrow money, he's had to increase taxes. So he's taken yeah. a difficult decision, but he's been upfront about that. But it's now about getting back to those Tory party fund uh, fundamentals, those fundamental principles okay. of bringing tax down, uh, delivering on things like Rwanda. We've got to see that bill come through, cutting those waiting lists, as I think somebody mentioned earlier on. Uh, I think this is Jeffrey Grifton, uh, Clifton Brown, on the NHS, stopping the boats, growing the economy, getting inflation down, all the things that he said he's going to do. We need to now see it and some, and that but will give him. He the can't chance. deliver all of that in the next, uh, what, nine months or what, no, ten months? Can he realistically? You mentioned Rwanda. That was going to be the biggest story. If they think of the expectation, this is the week the Rwanda bill comes back. It's third reading in the Commons. It's where they've you know, the big debates, all these amendments. We've got amendments from the sort of the one nation sort of lefty side, numerous amendments from the other side, loads of coalitions of the sort of European research group, the uh, the new Conservative group, the Common Sense group, you load of you know the usual suspects, largely sort of pro Brexiteers actually, but basically saying we need to have a bill that works. Um, um, and, and that bill needs to actually be something that will mean that you don't have foreign judges, the European Court of Human Rights, basically having pyjama injunctions, stopping the plane when it's on the runway and stopping it from taking off. But equally, you don't want it to be struck down by the Supreme Court again uh, because uh, you're not allowing enough appeal levels and things. I, I, I don't have any faith that 
any Rwanda flights will ever take off. And even if they do, 